two, one, and we're live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have another guest. He is Ledian. Hello, my man. How are you? Good, thanks. You, you just landed in the airport. You came from from which uh, part of the world? Because you travel a lot. I know that. <laughs> I uh, I live in Denmark, in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. uh, so you just uh, came from Denmark today? Yeah, uh, and uh, I'll be here for a couple of days. How, how was the flight? It was good, good. Uh, how long does it take to come from Denmark to Tirana? by flight is it just one flight or does it have uh, to no, transit from, somewhere from denmark you have to transit always mm -hmm. but the the whole flight takes Be about because we hours. don't have direct uh, lines to to denmark from yeah, Tirana, exactly. right yeah. no not yeah. at the moment not at the moment yeah right so you 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 do transit where in uh, germany frankfurt uh, maybe usually in vienna in austria uh -huh. and then austria. from here oh perfect yeah. You did go to Denmark for for school at first. Uh, yeah, I, I went to Denmark when I turned eighteen for studies. Oh, perfect for studies, and then so you uh, finished your high school here in Tirana. Yeah, in Tirana. you're from Tirana, like hundred percent. No, I mean uh, my parents are not from Tirana, but I was born here. You were born here and raised here. Raised, uh -huh. yes. Nice. And then when you turned up eighteen, you went to Denmark for. For uh, uh, for studies, yeah. I I was granted a scholarship from the Danish government, uh -huh. um, and then I studied there. The scholarship was quite good because it also covered the life expenses, wow, the perfect. living expenses. Yeah, um, and then after that, I I got a job uh, in in one of the biggest Danish companies, and then you know one thing. Led How many to years did uh, these uh, studies took? Uh, it took uh, three and a half years. Because there's there is half a year of mandatory uh, internship. Internship, yeah. Uh, and then right after that, so I actually, studied in in what major? Your major was it? My major was in uh, a bachelor in engineering of uh, information and communication uh -huh. technology. You did that in English. Yeah, in, English. in Denmark, people uh, speak English like fluently. Yes, yeah, they speak uh, quite fluently English. Yes. English. So they have their Denmark. Let's say. Uh, a, uh, language Danish, and also yeah, Danish, 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 yeah, and uh, English as well. It's not like an official language, but people do. Do, do you speak Danish? Yeah, I speak. Can you Danish. say hi in Danish? Hi, it's hi. <laughs> okay, <actually>. it's hi. <laughs> it's the same. Perfect. So, uh, when you went to Denmark, you were out of uh, the fitness world. Uh, when I was in Denmark, I was I was actually quite overweight. I, I would say, um, uh -huh. and while I was a student, that became worse. I did do some physical activity when I was do, uh, during high school or not, childhood here yeah, in during, Tirana. Yeah, during childhood, not, yeah. not during high school. Kind of football, for example. Basketball. I, basketball. I used to play a bit of uh -huh. basketball. Perfect. And uh, every now and then I went to the gym, mm -hmm. to a traditional gyms, but uh, not so much during my studies. Mm -hmm. I started going to the gym. Towards the end of my in studies. Denmark when you in were Denmark, in Denmark, yeah, yeah. But uh, in in Denmark, I I found out about cycling because uh, people there use cycling to transport themselves. Yeah, and that's the most convenient way. But uh, depending on where you live, you might need to cycle long distances. So mm -hmm. for me, I so had you were forced to yeah, cycle long distances. Kind of. I mean, I could take the bus and the train, but it was expensive and it took uh -huh. longer time. It was a bit stressful so. sometimes. So I decided to take a bike. So you switched your mindset to a fitness level and started taking your bike yeah. and skipping the bus and the train. Yeah, it was so the distance uh, exactly. to be covered was doubled. The intention was not actually to become fit. The intention was like it's a faster way to get to school. Yeah, uh, but uh, plus low cost. It's low cost. It's convenient and yeah. so on. But then um, I think like when I started doing that, I uh, lost quite a lot of weight. And I start feeling good uh, because I was basically doing thirty to what forty What was your pre-weight before you, before you lost weight? What was I, your? I think I was around hundred kilos. Hundred kilos. Back then, yeah. What, and, and what's then your I, height? I am one eighty-four centimeters uh -huh. uh, tall. So you were quite off, like let's say ten to thirteen kilos. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, uh, while, when I started doing the cycling, I, I lost quite a lot of kilos, mm -hmm. uh, actually. Uh, cycling helped you a lot, right? Yeah. And the so funny thing is I didn't do anything else. That was the only thing just, I was doing. Just cycling. And the food, the food part yeah. was, 
I well, would say I was eating a lot, but I mean, I was, it, I didn't really change a lot about my food. I, I just, it was the cycling 40 to 50 kilometers every day that kind of gave the shock to, to the fat, so to speak. I would say even the nutrition might have uh, had an impact on you because when you were in Tirana, you had your parents that maybe your mother would or your father would cook something yeah. for you, right? Yeah. But uh, in Denmark, sometimes you would skip meals. Yeah, yeah that's and maybe true, yeah. yeah. So that is true as well. Uh, no, just to just to come to the point that diet helps a lot as well. It does indeed. Yeah, and, uh, and but, so but back then, I mean, I, I was so hopeless, so to speak, that uh -huh. I thought that I need to really. Yeah, uh, maybe and do something so, extraordinary mm -hmm. with the guys to moving myself. Right. Um, so and so you lost your weight. Uh, just I, I lost, I think, uh, probably like uh, tw even more than 20 kilos in in like a few months time, which wow. was quite impressive. And then uh, since then, then I start thinking seriously about doing something more. That's so, why. So you 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 when you left Albania, you were like 100 kilos, and when you came back to Albania, you you were like. Very fit, 80 kilos. I was slim uh, I guy. was skinny, yeah, I was skinny. <laughs> and, um, and then your father was like, what happened to your son? But then I, I also kind of fell in love with cycling. So I upgraded, I bought like a racer a bike. I was, mm -hmm. I was then doing cycling during weekends for fun and mm -hmm. finding uh, different routes in Copenhagen and, and yeah. cycling long distance and so on. And one thing led to another. Then I started doing like some, I did some races and oh you did also races i did cycling like two ra two races of 136 kilometers 136 and then i did one i wouldn't say a race but like a long ride of 360 kilometers mm -hmm. uh, and then i was also training indoors quite a lot with uh, spinning indoor cycling i was doing that also five times a week and then i did that so much and so often then i actually became an instructor i uh -huh. also did a course on it in in denmark and I start also teaching uh, classes in spinning in Denmark. First, uh, it came so natural to you all this thing till uh, you became I from really the like fat doing boy them. to yeah. I really like doing it, so it became like a passion to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after that, I start working then in different gyms. I, I started first working in the gym that I used to train, which was uh, inside my workplace in mm -hmm. Denmark. Fitness culture is kind of incorporated. Was it a big space? It it was uh, not a, like a huge place, but uh -huh. it was right. It was uh, a place to to cycle a, a bit. Yeah, we we had eighteen eighteen cy cycles wow. in the spinning room alone. But wow. then there was the group training room that was made for twelve to fifteen people, uh -huh. and then there was like a uh, machine space uh -huh. that was a bit smaller. Uh, Did they also use the fans uh, when you cycle? Because there are a lot of gyms that use the fans uh, in not, front of them in, when they cycle yeah, just to yes. manipulate, let's say, the reality, you know, cycling with the fan uh, in front of them. Not this particular gym, mm -hmm. but there are a few gyms that I've seen. Um, that they actually do that. They use fans not for simulating air resistance, but for like uh, keeping you kind cool. of fresh and uh, cool. Keeping so uh, your system cool. To, so right. to increase a bit the performance. Yeah. I'm not sure if you have heard, but in America right now they are doing uh, cycling in a sauna room. Okay. Say, for example, cycling yeah. for half a marathon with, uh, let's say, 90 degrees, 100. Like, for Could example, be, yeah. if you if you walk in a in a desert in Sahara, for example, and you're just stuck by yourself, you need to your pain threshold should be high because if it's low. You're going to die there by, mm. by yourself, right? That's right. Actually, now that you mentioned this, I remember uh, the long ride that I did, 360 kilometers. Mm -hmm. That it was, was very hot. It was in. Uh, it was a ride from Houston, Texas, to Austin, Texas, uh -huh. and uh, it was during. Uh, oh, in America. Yeah, in the U.S. And it was during uh, summer, so it was quite hot. The problem is that I I lived in Denmark, which is quite cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had to. While I was training with different people, uh, they were telling me like you need to train in a hot environment yeah, because then exactly. You would... So, but what I was doing for that is I was training in a in in a room, so to speak, and the room was kind of hot. Mm -hmm. It was not the same temperature as it would be in in Texas, but it was kind of so. Let's same. say it would uh, stimulate your pain threshold to to get your body kind of used to that 
to to exercising and in that environment yeah right. because if you exercise in one environment and then you actually want to perform in a completely different environment yeah even mm. though you have muscle mass and you have strength and resistance and so on it, it you are adapted just for one uh, kind yeah, of uh, exactly. environment yeah exactly. you need and that worked well for me but i did the training only indoors mm -hmm. because i was training during the winter for for that right uh, so it it worked fine for me actually and yeah. that that is what, what uh, with that i actually trusted more on the results of spinning because mm -hmm. I, I got quite a good time and I overpassed what a lot of other people yeah. who were just training outdoors. And you were surprised by your results. Yes, I was. Actually. Just by looking a little bit at your, recalling your your past and yeah, yeah, just yeah. what happened in, let's say, in six years, seven years. Yeah, uh, yeah. maybe a bit less, but yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, and then... Like uh, with cycling, I uh, I started uh, also running. Mm -hmm. I start combining stuff. So I start running. I did a marathon as well at the same year where I actually did these events. So that year was uh, 2013. Uh -huh. And in that year, I've been the slimmest ever. I've been wow. 60, 76 kilos. 76 kilos. And I was quite skinny, I must say. Um but uh, I got quite good results also in the marathon, my first marathon. Three. Yeah, because these are sports where you need to be very slim and very light. Exactly. I mean, it, it one kilo uh, makes a lot of difference if you need to run for 42 kilometers. But also your power used to be very high because in cycling you you had very good results. Exactly. I was combining... So, for example, Chris both. Froome in cycling, uh, if you have heard about him, yes. he's very, very slim. You have seen, he's like... Uh, yeah, you need to have some muscle mass in your legs. Well, not some, quite a lot. Um, but, uh, I mean, you, you need good, you need big legs for both sports, running and yeah. cycling. You need a big heart, of course, to pump the blood. Sure. Uh, the engine but, is important. But you don't need arms, so to speak, and, and the upper body that much. Yeah. You do need, you, you do use a bit of your core uh, strength during running mm -hmm. to keep straight, and you do move your arms a bit, so... You need to move them in an efficient way. And for that, it's good to have a good core. Yeah, you need your rhythm. Exactly. But in cycling, it's actually just about hard work and moving your legs. You don't, yeah. your upper body is not used in any kind of sense. Yeah. If you do long distance cycling, actually... You, you need gas tank. You need, you need, of course, you need a lot of water and you do need um, some energy because, yeah. as you know, you deplete your your carb uh, deposits yeah. uh, and then you start the uh, the fat deposits but y your performance reduces significantly when you do that but many of those dudes that uh, do perform a long distance running for example let's say ultra trails you know ultra runs they usually know how to use the they shift it during the run to the to the fat to the fat uh, but they deposit. are trained to do that so they know how their body because even their diets they eat a lot of uh, fat yeah because their body is used in that way. Exactly. So their training is for endurance and for long distance. So yeah. their body is adjusted to also storing more carbs. Their their uh, energy deposit in their liver is higher than a normal person sure. that doesn't do the type of training. So that's one benefit. But then also their body is, of course... Um, better at doing the energy exchange during mm -hmm. performance. During, yeah. Uh, and also, as you say, for them, it's not a big shock in the body to kind of also use some yeah. fat deposit because they've already done that before. Yeah, they so. shift smoothly. Yeah. Um, but uh, the problem with cycling, I was saying, is that if you do long distance, like, for example, it took me around four hours to do 136 kilometers on the bike. That is, uh, you, s you have problems with a little bit with your neck. You need to, yeah, because you're you are holding one position and your neck kind of gets frozen. So yeah, that's, that's why you need to train. I, I used to train like 100, 110 kilometers because you need to get used to that movement. Yeah, you get. Um, and then uh, the lower back might be a bit of a problem, but that's why you really need to adjust. It depends how flexible you are yes. at first, at first. But then you get used to, of course. You get used to it, but also you need to really uh, fix your bike according to your length. Because if, sure. 
If you don't, then that's important. Then the position will kind of, if you are sitting in a bit of a you stretch position, you will stretch your muscles. Then you will hear uh, you your muscle will hurt, and yeah. then you will kind of lose focus. Um, yeah. So these are, and maybe also the uh, the wrists. They might get a bit tired as well, depending on the. But that's why you kind of change the position of yeah. your hands on the bike right. during the uh, during the cycling. That is not like a huge issue, but it could get if you are just holding in one place for a really long time. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the other thing also is that you need to build some strategies as well on how you cycle in these events. Uh, Especially if you cycle in a group. Exactly. Cycling in a group and that has its own kind of strategies and how you do that. Uh, for me, I kind of, in all these events I did, I kind of, Individual? I did individual and that kind of hurt me a bit. But uh, I did try during the during the the race to kind of go in a group and it makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're standing alongside a person and then Yeah, because you help each other. Yeah, the, he gets all the resistance of the air and yeah. you kind of rest a little bit. Yeah. While you can change and shift. And I think and it's then smart you push to push hard. That. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then, but then you have to change. You overcome, yeah. You you change with the other people. Sure. Uh, and then the the biggest problem was also the the turning on the on the different uh, turns, depending on how fast you go and yeah. how you turn. Uh, it's very important that the side you are turning, the leg on the side you are turning is up, not down. If mm-hmm. it's down, you it's more or less hundred percent sure you will fall. Yeah, because your leg will uh, will scratch the ground, yeah. and then. But you these will... are very technical, and uh, only this... people that are <laughs> cyclists would understand this. Yes, I exactly. guess. Yes, but uh, this I, I am an engineer, as I said. So everything yeah, you, you that like I do, technical I break things. it down, and I yeah, I figure out what what can I do to get better at it. Yeah, and what works best. Exactly. Yeah. So. These are just something because I think there are a lot of people that like cycling. Yeah. But I'm not sure any of them know this type the of thing. The same thing like running. They love running, but they don't run yeah. good. They don't have the proper form and mm. they may uh, get hurt. Exactly, exactly. And if you want, I can also talk about some details about running as well. That I I did a lot of studying when I did my marathon. Uh, you uh, did about uh, running as well. About running as well. and uh, I've heard also about the rhythm of your breath. For example, it's like uh, two two. it's like that. <laughs> it's just like a rhythm because, you know, you mm. just look at animals, they have a rhythm. Uh, I haven't heard a particular about this. Uh, I've tried I this think, and it's a good one. But I can, when I hear it, I think it, it probably yeah, works. It works. Uh, I mean, the thing is that every, you can do it. It's not it's not undoable to do a marathon. It's it's different than a half marathon. I've done half marathons without training yeah. a few times, and that is I think that is I think I've read somewhere scientifically proven that anyone can just run a half marathon. Yeah. Um, but marathon is a bit trickier because uh, the liver deposits we talked about. Mm-hmm. A normal person can store uh, energy. Which will deplete in mo- at most two to and a half hours, but mm-hmm. uh, a marathon uh, runs Lost. for for normal. For example, I did it for three and three hours twenty eight minutes. Well, let's say four and four and a half. So that means that in one hour, if I don't put some kind of energy in my body, I will not. I will start using my fat deposits. Yeah. And but that, if you, you never not, know how that works. Yeah, but if you're you. not used to use your fat deposits, exactly. you'll collapse. Exactly. Your performance will uh, will kind of go down and depending on how your body works, you yeah. might even just not be able point, to finish. At that point, hydration is very crucial. Hydration important. is very crucial. For me, I'm kind of... Look, there, there, there is also... Uh, I've read about a lot about like genetics and but different body types. Yeah, I'm not saying that it makes a huge difference, but it does kind of distinguish people. I, for, for yeah, example, it edges. Exactly, I am good at endurance stuff. Yeah, that's that's how I am, and and probably also because it has been now. Uh, we know we quite both know about years. these two kind of fibers, the white fibers exactly. and the red. That's also in relation to this. Yeah, uh, so because there are tests that they do. In, yeah, you uh, can get your your muscle fibers and you can actually analyze them and yeah, see if you have and, type one or type two and which type two and so on. And you can set yourself which kind of uh, training is best for you, right? Yes, 
I actually have done this kind of genetic test and, and what was also, your result? It, it also proved that uh, I am mostly towards endurance. Uh -huh, uh, towards endurance. I do have some capability for power, of but course. it's it's limited and, and the endurance is kind of over overrules on, on yeah. as opposed to power. For me, I, I didn't, uh, you know, you see people get, getting gels and stuff while they're running. Mm -hmm. I, I took zero while I did the uh, the half marathon. Sorry, the marathon, the full marathon. So you shifted towards the fat deposits. Yes, and it actually, it, I didn't mm -hmm. see any problems or anything during the, the marathon. I actually, I felt quite powerful towards the end of it, Yeah, which made me... Which meant that I could have pushed myself a bit more, but since it was my first marathon, I took it easy and I didn't go all out, so to speak. It's also on your mindset because you believe that and that's yes. how it goes. There are a lot of people that uh, don't believe that and they just need some uh, mm. fast fuel and they just grab it. Yeah, but uh, I don't know, like th the theory says that you need the fuel. Of course you need the fuel. Uh, but for me, actually, I'm also a bit surprised that I I trained well, so I could last longer, so to speak, yeah. uh, with my deposits. Mm -hmm. I, I had more deposits, uh, but also my, my... So what's your pace in a marathon, in a marathon, full marathon? Uh, I think, my, so I did it in three hours, 28 minutes, so I think my pace was around four minutes, 50 seconds, 54 seconds, something like that. Uh -huh. less than five minutes less than five minutes so that's per kilometer that's pretty good like but uh, I did, that, that's above average that's above average but i trained for that um let me think now the marathon was in may i start training first of january so to speak so i trained for five months four and a half months yeah. for that mm -hmm. and it was intense training i was doing a marathon distance every week so you gradually raised your training performance let's say and then you you took a little bit, let's say, the last two weeks before the marathon? The the last week I... You eased a little bit? Uh, the last week I, I ran just a little bit, yeah. just to keep the the joints and the muscles active. Yeah. I, I ran like three to five kilometers yeah, every sure. day. But uh, the other weeks I just uh, did long distances. And uh, does your pace change when you do the half marathon? Or it doesn't have to do, it's just the same pace for you? No, you can do half marathon faster. Faster. Course. Yes. And also the, the the other, like I did, I think I broke my record, my personal record on the 10K right before the marathon. What I'd, was your 10K? Uh, for 36 minutes. 36 minutes? 10K. Fuck that. And I did that after I did a, uh, I had a boxing class. Right after the boxing class, I wanted to do 36 10K. minutes is a big one. <laughs> and I you felt... You need to celebrate that. Yes. I felt like I was flying through that, but no, that a, was... It's a big one, no, for real. <laughs> because what, what's the world record in a 10K? Uh, it's under 30, of course. I mean, it's... It could be something... Uh, 28? 28? I want to see that. Yeah, we can check that. Because I'm very... Because 36 is a good one. Mine is a 41, I guess. 10k it's probably 15 minutes or something <laughs> no 20 maybe 26 17 okay yeah in uh, belgium in uh 2005 mm. 26 but august i mean if i run 10k now <laughs> it will probably take me like 50 minutes or something um so that training makes a huge difference there yeah in these type of sports that we are talking about here so uh of, we, so you you did all these experience you took part on all these events you you needed to go further with all these yeah i then i mean the problem with these I, running in particular i kind of decided to not really spend more energies with it because it was too hard for for my body mm -hmm. as i said i was i was did running. you feel anything to your knees uh, I didn't really feel anything with my knees and I think that because of cycling, the cycling has this kind of uh, healing capability mm -hmm. uh, with a knee joint. So I, I didn't feel any, I didn't get any injuries or anything like that. It's just that I felt like it's a lot in general, you know, mm -hmm. for the body to to take all this uh, uh, pressure. All this load, yeah. And of course there is load on the knees, as you say, and, sure. and on the bones, uh, as well, and so yeah. on and then i i really got skinny <laughs> yeah so i thought like i need to you know build some muscles as well 
So uh, I decided to actually start doing some functional training and some CrossFit. Functional after training that. is great. Always been great. Mm. And I started doing that as well after I did these events. And ev- ever since, I think I kind of shifted. Um, I still, I've been doing like spinning um, and been an instructor now for like seven years. So your se- favorite years. cardio is is still cycling spinning, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but uh, I've I've actually started doing. Uh, a lot of functional training and and uh-huh. for the last year or one half year i've been doing crossfit as well so so you did get also a certificate in uh crossfit level one yeah like CrossFit instructor. level one yeah. and also i did this special uh, specialization courses in in gymnastics um me and my brother were going to do the level two in september as uh-huh. well for crossfit uh, you need to pass uh, something to to get to the yeah, yeah, there level is, two You you need to have level one, and for level one there, there is a test at the second day that mm-hmm. you need to do, which is I wouldn't say it's difficult, but it's tricky. Um, uh-huh. And uh, but if we talk about courses, I've actually done uh, quite a lot of courses for my own interest. I, I mentioned before the spinning course mm-hmm. that was a ninety hours course. Uh, both practical and theoretical. They're in Denmark, right? With, uh, an exam. Yeah, in Denmark. I also did a course in uh, nutrition, a course in uh, anatomy and physiology, a course in being a fitness instructor, and a course in being a personal trainer. Each of these is like a 90 hours course. And you have done a lot of things. On the side with my other... You have done a lot of things. There's a lot of things you have done. I think, like, as I said, the knowledge is quite important to kind of understand this. But at the end of the day, with fitness, is that everyone has to try their own thing and kind of find what works best for them. Yeah, that's true. And then keep improving on that thing. There is always room for improvement when it yeah, comes yeah, to yeah, sports. Yeah. So. And so now you're set in Albania or Denmark. What you're doing in Denmark? Because studies have finished, right? I, I have... You're working I'm there? working in a... I'm actually working in the oil and gas industry. Uh, So I, I'm, I'm working as an engineer. Okay. So I have a full-time uh-huh. job, eight, hour, eight, eight, eight hours. hours a day. Eight, uh, 8 a.m., 4 p.m.? Yeah, so, uh-huh. exactly. Um, so, so you live there by, by your own? Yeah, yeah, I live there by myself. Yeah. You like Denmark, living in Denmark? You I've, like the people, the social I've life? I've been around quite a lot, I must say, mm-hmm. with my job, but also uh, I like to travel a lot. Uh, I've also lived in the U.S. for six months. Uh, How was your US in uh, maybe difference in uh, Denmark? Yeah, it's it's quite different. Uh, in Denmark, people it's, change. In Denmark, yeah, people change a lot, but also the system and the way things work, uh, mm-hmm. and also the approach towards work, towards uh-huh. life in general changes. They maybe approach a different philosophy in America. Exactly, and. I don't necessarily say it's right or wrong, but I, I, in life, I think like people should, you know, do their passions and not spend all their energies on on work and on, you know, sure, other stuff. So that's what the balance, the life work balance is very good in Denmark. That's why I've been able to kind of do. Also, I'm I'm still like an instructor, so I teach classes, mm-hmm. <laughs> four classes a week together with my. So you job. you still have a free time. You you still are flexible, let's say. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I do them outside of working hours, but I still can do it at least. That's perfect, um, man. So, and I also commute to to and from work with a bike. And now at the moment I have a 20 kilometer distance. 20. Back and so, forth. One way. Uh-huh. So, so 40. 40 kilometers a day. Yeah, but yeah, I've heard a lot of people also the news that people enjoy riding their bikes in um, in uh, in Denmark. Because there is a lot of uh, a lot of uh, ways for for bikes. Yeah, the infrastructure is perfect. So you have uh, your own lane, and you have all the traffic lights, and it's completely. Also, you get treated the there, right? The cyclists get treated. Uh, also, they they have respect by other. Yeah, I mean by the citizens that just come by. The, as I said, the infrastructure is right. So you have a traffic light. So you also know, for the bikes. Also for bikes, you have a special one for bikes. Mm-hmm. And then also the cars, they always don't turn right without looking back uh-huh. because the, the bike lane is right next to the right. car lane. However, I would say there is some degree of, of danger in that. 
and uh, you really need to be careful because there's still things happen. Have you ever been part of an incident, accident? I've been part of many, many incidents, incidents. Unfortunately, yes. Uh huh. I've been hit by a car. I've I've been hit by another bike. Wow. I have been uh, uh, involved in an accident just by myself on the bike. And uh, in one of so. and what happens when you get hit by a car there? Does uh, the the one with the car was uh, the scariest one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but basically, I was in a in a, a crossing, and uh, okay. basically I was going straight. I was it okay. was green for me. And uh, on the opposite side, there was a car that wanted to turn okay. to the left mm-hmm. uh, with his left, so my right. Yeah. But uh, the the traffic light for, for her was also green, but of course she needs to wait for everyone that's going straight first before she can turn. Sure. But, but for she, s- she didn't see you, let's say? She actually stopped. And then uh, while I was right in the middle of the crossing, she decided to accelerate. Wow. So actually, she uh, there was some degree of, of luck in that accident because she hit me on my back wheel. Uh-huh. So she didn't like hit and, me. In uh-huh, front. Okay. And you spinned? I spinned and actually I did. Uh, I felt on her car, um, but I felt with my hip, not with my head or anything. Okay. Like that. Uh, and and she was uh, she was obviously a new driver, so yeah. she was uh, she didn't know what she was doing. She kept driving straight. Wow. So, so I felt on her car and then felt out of the car in the pavement. Yeah. Did she stop then? Then she stopped and, and I, the police and the ambulance came in less than one minute. In, in, wow. On, on premises. So fast. Really fast. And, uh, but anyway, fortunately enough, I didn't really... I, w- I was not wearing a helmet and I felt really bad. Uh, since then, I'm wearing always a helmet now, no, no matter what. Yeah. Uh, but I did, as I said, I didn't hit my head or anything, because that's always the the worst that can yeah. happen. Uh, but it it was a shock, and you know, you know, you destroy yeah, your sure. day. The next day, you are just sitting in bed, and yeah, yeah, it's not it's not pleasant, so to speak. Yeah. Now here in Albania, what uh, what relates you here in Albania? Except your family, your brother, your father. What what relates you else? Uh, you know, we Albanians have this saying that our religion is B- Albanian. Yeah. And then so there is always that feeling that you, you need to come back. You need and to come back and be here. Uh, but I have kind of taken that a step further and together with my brother and two uh, of my friends and business partners, we have actually um, created a, the first fitness chain here in Albania mm-hmm. um, and brought a new concept of training. Um, for the people of Tirana yeah. to begin with. That's the emblem of your... Uh... Yes, exactly. This is our icon, uh, our logo. Yeah. Um, a Spartan. It's it, This is kind of like uh, sp- uh, to represent strength and power. Yeah. And also something that is old and antique, but also yeah. kind of uh, authentic. That's like yeah. Albanians themselves as a population and then this one is like a wheel because uh, because of the bike because of the bike and uh-huh. a substantial part so of let's say the, the strength the power and the cardio together exactly <laughs> and that is the the concept of elite sporting club that we have brought uh, to Tirana mm-hmm. to kind of combine this uh, stuff together for for the best kind of training performance that you can get and, and uh, there's a lot of thought behind this. And we talked about the history of kind of my life and what yeah. I've been doing also in fitness. This is kind of reflected in Elite Sporting Club. Mm-hmm. And it is proven to work. And it is a concept that is applied in gyms all, uh, all over the world. Everything that worked for you, let's say in Denmark, you wanted yes. to apply here exactly. for... Everything that worked with me, everything that kind of I've seen uh, with, throughout my experience... In, in gyms uh, and also uh, everything that science says as well uh-huh. because um, because without science you can't prove uh, many things exactly and and the knowledge that we have acquired f- again from from the experience but also from all these courses that we have mentioned is kind of embedded into this uh-huh. into this concept uh, yeah right. it's a new concept that and for for a market that's really kind of young in fitness. Uh, yeah. it's a bit 
strange, I would say, and unknown. And we as Albanians, we are a bit uh, uh, resistant to new things. Yeah, I, I think it's because of historical reasons and so on. However, uh, if you you know take your time and you show that you have passionate about it and you know. And you really explain people why you have done because there is why. lack of information as well. There is also lack of information. There is a lot of disinformation, um, but I think at the end of the day, people kind of see them by themselves, and that is what sure. really matters at the end of the day. And what we want is that uh, also uh, f- by the name of it, we want that people you know become a club that come and trains by themselves and, mm-hmm. and with themselves and kind of push one another get the results and keep getting the results not just to say that I'm coming to the gym but to really invest in their longer term life I mean so what we don't f- do fitness just to look good we do fitness yeah to feel good but also to be healthy and to live longer and to live longer with um, without uh, visiting the doctor so to speak right uh, so so how many uh, fitness centers you have because you said there is a chain of uh So we started with uh, Elite Sporting Club uh, Pazari. That's the first one. The opened first one? in October 2017. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we opened the second one in May of 2019 in another right area so of Tirana called Don Bosco. Mm-hmm. So they are two point something kilometers apart from, from one another. And of course we do have plans to expand further. Um And uh, the so I- right now we have two two, two fitness gyms, centers, yeah, two gyms. Okay. And uh, uh, the idea is that with one membership in any of the gyms, people can train in both. Gyms. Oh, that's a good one because that's very flexible and exactly. And uh, so the classes you teach, let's say there, there are how many classes there are? We have around ten different class types. So to speak, and people can choose from from these different classes. So we classes. can find the same classes that are organized in one fitness center to yes, the other fitness center. Yes, it's the same classes. Yeah, there okay. Are, there are no different classes that are done just in that gym. It's the same class types. And what Both are the gyms. most crowded, let's say, classes that are most preferred by by people, by I w- the clients? I would say uh, for Elite Sporting Club uh, Pazar, the first one. Um, what has been seen the most in- there has been enough time now to see trends and uh, because we do spend quite a lot of time on the data as well uh-huh, uh, analyzing sure. uh, how the gym because you need to improve exactly uh, I think the preferred classes are uh, body bike so the spinning the spinning yeah and the cross training cross training so yeah. cross training let's say is focused more to functional training that's functional training done in This a circuit kind of manner but also how long does it take a class to be managed usually classes are one hour one hour uh, together with the warm up and then the stretch yeah including everything okay. yes there are some classes that are a bit less the heat is 45 minutes but that's high more intensity intense. interval training okay And then uh, the bikes could be like one hour, 15 minutes because there is some transition period from uh-huh. the bikes we combine with like core strength and yeah. other exercises so to transit and to remove the shoes and the... So, uh, so these three classes, classes have been uh, very crowded and the most preferred? I would say all the other classes have also had uh, quite good participation. Maybe like their ups and downs. Hit and uh, fit box and kickbox and uh-huh. dance fit also. However, like these two have been like constantly kind of fully booked, mm-hmm. whereas the others have had uh, ups and downs. Yeah, ups and downs. I would say around eighty percent uh, participation, which is still quite good. But you know, right? Now you said you're going to apply for uh, for another CrossFit uh, level certificate, which is the the second level. Level, two. yeah, level two. Yeah, and uh, why are you doing that? Do you uh, do you have any plans on crossfit we plan to kind of open the first crossfit affiliate in albania in that our, would be awesome because in there our is no second one. location the the only different thing between our second location and first location is yeah. that our second location is uh, well it twice as big as the first location wow but the second location has a very well arranged open gym area which by itself could be just the cross crossfit area uh-huh Um, so there we actually do have all it's the big enough for for a, for a CrossFit area 
Yeah, it's big enough to to hold uh, okay. 10 to 12 people class. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, and it has all the equipment, all the necessary equipment uh, that CrossFit the uses. The racks. It has the racks, it has, uh, you know, uh, rowing and, and air Flights, bikes and everything. Everything, bumper plates, a lot of uh, dumbbells, kettlebells. In kilograms or pounds? Kilograms, kilograms. Okay. So everything is in kilograms. So we because do have pounds all the look always bigger because you know they <laughs> yeah yeah um, so that that is one of our plans. Uh, however, the problem is that but you need to take the license from the CrossFit. Yeah, uh, you need to uh, to you to to become an affiliate. You need to have at least one certified uh, one level one trainer, CrossFit level one trainer, uh-huh. which me and my brother are, and you need to pay three thousand dollars a year to CrossFit. Just to keep it uh, active. Yes. And then you will... The thing is that CrossFit is a brand. So people that know CrossFit, everywhere they go, so to speak, they search for CrossFit affiliates. Yeah. And if and you they search... See, let's say they go to Albania, it's there nothing, is none. Yeah. And yeah. so they... But we will be there. So if we pay this now and we get into their systems, then, then anyone in the world who comes to Tirana and search, here, they can, they can uh, see it. Yeah. And of course, that uh, I think it's uh, worth that we mention here that if you Google CrossFit in Tirana, you will find probably like hundreds of gyms, but none of them is, yeah. as I mentioned. Yeah, I know that problem. Uh, an, an official affiliate, the gym itself, but also the trainers that are there are not because the same thing goes for trainers. So in order to be a CrossFit trainer, you need to have this um, certificate that I mentioned. And for that, you need to do a course and pass the exam. Yeah. There are only four or five people in the whole Albania now, including myself and my brother. So there are not so many yeah, yeah. <laughs> trainers as there are CrossFit gyms. So it's it's a problem that happens in uh, developing countries. Um, yeah, like however, us. of course, just like Albania, but however, this will change. <laughs> that what's important is to tell people this so that they know. Uh, because CrossFit is it's it's a it's a wonderful sport, um, but it's quite uh, technical some sometimes, and uh, you need to really know what you are doing, and otherwise you are you you might uh, run into uh, to issues with your health if you don't do that. Yeah. For example, uh, one of the things that uh, I'm not talking physical like damage if you do something wrong, which is definitely there, uh, but also. Uh, Reptomyosis, that's like a disease that a lot of uh, crossfitters have. That's basically overtraining mm-hmm. or training at uh, weights or loads that you are not capable of, of handling. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, your your blood uh, veins kind of explode and you have blood flowing outside mm-hmm. of them. So and blood pressure really kills you. Exactly, and then uh, that those blood cells flow, flowing outside of the system, they kind of affect the organs, or, and they could. It, it's a kind of a deadly disease. This one, yeah. if you get it, and then you need to be really care- careful. For example, if you uh, if you uh, do this and you kind of pee blood, for example, mm-hmm. after you have worked like uh, done a workout that's really hard, that's a, that's that's a sign for reptomyosis, and you need to go to the hospital to to do that and I've heard crossfitters that have had this wow. even people that go to the games today for example if you know uh, Matt Fraser uh, not Matt Fraser the uh, the Swedish guy that uh, won second place uh, last year Tony Tony something like that what is his name I remember he, he's a tall guy right with uh, uh, big really, muscles a really tall guy yeah, yeah, yeah he, know, w- he actually got herptomyosis and he was in the hospital for, for quite a while and that's no why, way. and that's why he was uh, really happy when he won because it really paid out for him. I mean, he sure. really worked hard. No way, sure. And and this is one the worst one I, I mentioned. But I mean, if you don't know how to squat well, you could damage your lower back. If you don't know how to snatch, you could damage your spine. Like there are so many things that can go wrong there. Um, so it's really important to have. A trainer that that kind of can see what you can do and scale the exercises down to to do something because CrossFit is for everyone. You can scale every single exercise to something that make that person work, mm-hmm. and and it's relative. Like hundred yeah. kilos squat is nothing for for us, but it could be a lot for someone else. Mm-hmm. So you can do it with fifty kilos. It's still for that person. He's working hard. Yeah, with his. Uh, then this person will improve, of course. Exactly. 
So, but you really need to kind of know the science behind and be trained to this. You you can't you can't be a trainer out of looking videos in YouTube, and this is a phenomenon phenomenon that we that see here. That happens a lot, yeah. In Albania, unfortunately, you really need to do your studies. You need to talk to a lot of professionals, and you need to also have some because experience and see different stuff. And also, you need to have the ability to to on on the spot. Kind of see the person and fix the person. Yeah, that is why guys like you go and uh, spend time and take this certificate to help others, yes. right? I mean, I've taken it also a bit of, uh, a step further. I've trained. I, I've actually also uh, have my own my own personal trainer. Uh-huh. Um, I've had one personal trainer in weightlifting, and I've had one personal trainer in gymnastics. Mm-hmm. So as you know, CrossFit is like you know you have the yeah. endurance and the kind of cardio. You have the special skills, which you is have the, the kind of three main one: gymnastics, yeah. weightlifting, yeah, weightlifting and, and cardio. The yeah. cardio one is fine for me, from my experience. Yeah, the weightlifting and gymnastics are are not that good, so I needed help. Uh, so I had these uh, sessions with uh, the weightlifting, and I did that with the um, one of the ex Danish champions in powerlifting, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, he he actually looked at my squat technique and my deadlift technique and bench press technique and learned, taught me how to you know do them better mm-hmm. according to my anatomy. Yeah, because for example, I have long so you, arms. So you can reach your best and maybe improve your weight exactly. just by that form, the yes. perfect form. The let's perfect say. form. And then the same with gymnastics. Gymnastics for CrossFit, uh, a lot of like uh, you know. Uh, pull-ups a lot of keeping on the bar yeah handstands and uh-huh. so on uh, l- rope uh, rope climbing so I, those are things i never did before so yeah. i've spent some time with uh, so you face person. new new challenges exactly uh, so. what is your favorite movement in crossfit uh, if i mine have... mine for example uh clean and jerk uh, was uh, pretty awesome for me mm-hmm. i i loved that clean and jerk uh also the snatch you know i think uh, if i had to say what is the the best one i would say is the deadlift for me mm-hmm. the classic because i'm also good relatively better at deadlift uh-huh. as compared Your to body squat, works uh yeah. best uh i do i i also love snatch i must say however snatch is one of those movements. it's very functional it it involves everything every it single has power it has a lot of power yeah there but, are two movements the only problem with snatch is that you really need to train a lot to to sure. get better at it. There is a lot of technique, yeah. A lot of technique and a lot of uh, muscles that you you don't really use so much in in other workouts. It takes uh, down to the stabilizer muscles. Exactly. Yeah. So, so like because the, you can feel that when you do the snatch, you can feel that there are those very thin muscles that come yeah. into play. Exactly. And I love that. That's why I love the snatch. So uh, I I do I do like snatch as well. So I would say deadlift is the first snatch is the second for sure. Yeah, I do also like working with kettlebells. I think yeah, kettlebells are a great one also for yeah. cardio. It's it's quite a good they, they way. They trigger to... the cardio because anything you do with a kettlebell has let's say three four movements like yeah. like an exercise. Exactly. So. But I, I, I'm all about combining these things, you know, like sure. not, not just run, not just bike, but also do a little bit of this. I, I know that there are people that just do one thing, uh, which is okay, but that's why I love CrossFit, because in CrossFit you can do everything and be good at everything. So Yeah, you're like a complete yeah. athlete. I, I do believe that you will never be good in everything. I mean, even if you see at the games, at the CrossFit games... Uh, people that have been former weightlifters, they are better at weightlifting than they are at of running and, and swimming. But still, uh, if you compare an average guy that only swims with an average guy that does CrossFit, mm-hmm. he will probably be quite close to that swimmer, but also do a lot of other yeah. stuff that the other yeah, person that's true. do. So. Yeah. I like that. I like that in CrossFit, is like you can run fast, you can bike, but you can also lift a lot of weight. Yeah. That's kind of cool if you yeah. think about it. So, but of course, if you want to be best at one thing, you just go to one thing and just work just for that. Mm. Mm. We know that. So uh, that's uh, I like the combination, so to speak. 
So now here uh, in Tirana, what are your plans? Do you have any plans here in Tirana after opening your 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 new gym? Do you plan to visit it? Uh, here, start? I'm here twice a month, more or less. Um, you you don't teach class here. Do you teach class here? I do some classes whenever I uh, visit. What are the classes? I I would presume the spinning class. Spinning class is yeah. one of them. Um, that's the one I do the most, but also like cross training or hit. So you, you, when you come here, you're like this the special teacher because you're just for one day, right? Yeah, okay, exactly. I've also I've spent a lot of time with the instructors that yeah. uh, actually work at the gym. So I've tried to convey all my knowledge to them. Uh -huh. So right now you're in Denmark. You're except you're working. You're also doing some CrossFit with. Uh... Yes, I I uh, I'm a member of uh, a CrossFit uh, gym. Uh huh. Okay. How, how 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 much do you pay? Uh, I'm not sure how much it's. It's just a bit expensive. It's a bit expensive because in Italy, for example, in Rome. If you want to go to a gym, uh, if you want to use the CrossFit facilities to a gym, it would cost around 78 euros. It's a lot. I think it's kind of similar. It's kind of okay. similar? Yeah. It's around 80 euros. Do you think in America it costs uh, in, a lot? or In America it will be $100. $100 to go to a CrossFit box? Yes. It's a lot. And it will cost 25 But why? It will cost $25. Isn't there a lot of CrossFit boxes? Why does it cost so much? Because there is costs associated with CrossFit, as I mentioned. You have to pay to CrossFit. And the trainers that you have there, they mm. need to be certified. And the certification itself costs money. Um, so that's the nature. And the trainers, But, look, the trainers that are there, they need to be paid because they work hard. Uh -huh. They are constantly doing programs. They are constantly uh, testing the programs, the workouts. You you can't just do a workout and then throw it out there. You have yeah, to test it and see with the time and you have to try it out if it makes sense. Yeah. Um, so they need to, you know, get paid as well. So you need spe specialists to do it. So they do, need to get paid. To, do you to think do here well. in Albania, if you open that CrossFit space, do you think uh, there would be a difference in um, in other CrossFit, CrossFit uh, gyms in Tirana? Do you think there will be a difference and people say, oh, now there is a real CrossFit of space. Course. Now let's go to this real CrossFit space. Of course there will be a difference. Uh, people, w look, no matter how uninformative people are, if they are not stupid. If, exactly. The people are not stupid, so they will see themselves. For example, uh -huh. I have never seen uh, a CrossFit uh, box and I'm not talking only Denmark. I've, I've been quite a lot in the US. Yeah. Um, And I've also been around. Actually, everywhere I go, I kind of go and look at different gyms mm -hmm. in, in Germany, in Italy, in, in yeah. the UK. Yeah. Um, a trainer cannot w train 30 people at once very well. Mm -hmm. So if Because you, you cannot look at No, no, 30. exactly. It's, it's impossible physically to look. Um, so, and also there is no time. I mean, the, the, the CrossFit uh, Copenhagen, where I train, is like... The workouts themselves. Okay. It varies, but usually I would say on average, the mm -hmm. workout is not more than 30 minutes mm -hmm. itself if you combine. 30 minutes else is warm up and explanation and warm up before the workout. Okay. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of work that goes into like uh, doing special exercises to warm up your joints and yeah. muscles, but also. How many minutes does it take? Uh, it, 10 to 15 10 to 15 okay but also you do kind of a, ah, a in crossfit do they specialized warm up before the workout okay so that also takes some time yeah uh, do do they uh, i don't know in crossfit do they incorporate the stretch before any workout or, or do they put the stretch uh, behind that they don't Because do the any stre stretch in the classes that i've been there there is a class called mobility class okay so that's a special class you yeah. can go to and do that but in the workout class So there are different classes. There is a normal WOD class. Okay. That's the workout of the day. It's different every day. There is a mobility class that I mentioned. Right. There is weightlifting class. Right. So you have workouts, but only specific with a bar with a barbell. Uh -huh. You have gymnastics classes where you only do gymnastics stuff. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, CrossFit Copenhagen has uh, also some classes that are called power. Mm-hmm. There you do a lot of like uh, squat, deadlift, bench press, but combined yeah. and also a lot of accessory uh, workouts. Yeah. Then you have uh, team uh, wads. 
So you do two and two. Mm-hmm. You do different stuff. Yeah. So there is a lot. And then you have uh, advanced wads. Those are for more advanced people. Yeah. And then you have beginner's classes, uh, beginner wads. So it's for everyone, so to speak. Um, I see. I see. Uh, you, in yourself, do you think stretching should be should be behind or in front of a training? Let's uh, say if you hit weight training. Are you talking about st- weight static or dynamic stretching? Static. Do you think you should uh, do static stretching before any workout? I don't think so. You don't think so? I Why? Mean, Because your muscles are not warmed? I, I don't think it's... I'm not saying that it's wrong to do it, I'm, I'm, but I think that it's more efficient to do dynamic stretching before the workout because it's just more efficient to warm up the muscle in that way as okay. opposed to static. Because And the muscle... The, the, the thing is, like, just think about it this way. When you use the muscle, you are repeatedly and actively truncating and uh, enlarging the muscle during the workout. Yeah. During the static stretching, stretching you are just truncating and keeping it there. Mm-hmm. So the dynamic stretching does the same thing as when you are working the muscle. It just does it as a, a very, warm-up very, way. very uh, light load and not so hard and not so long, so to speak. There's also this ballistic stretching, which for me is very dangerous. What, what, what is that? Ballistic thing? stretching, you know how it is? For example, if you, if you want to touch your toes with your fingers, when you do static stretching, you go low, 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 right? And then you stay for 10 seconds and then you go uh, slowly uh, right back. But with ballistic stretching, you go like very, very fast and then you go up. But you go like d- dynamically very fast mm. and that's very dangerous. Yeah, that I that's th- ballistic stretching. I think it's okay to do the stretching slowly and spend some seconds on a position. Then, that uh, I think that should be fine. But that might be a bit dangerous. Yeah, to, that's to very dangerous. Or yeah. So, but but mobility so for work you, for mobility you. work is really important as well. Sure. And for example, here in Albania, if you tell someone mobility, they will like look at you strange and say, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, they, it's quite important. They don't understand that. Yeah, mm. mobility is important for for the future. When you get old, if you don't have mobility, you're going to face a lot of problems because yeah. you know the the bones are going to Osteoporosis comes into play if you don't have mobility. But those will going to crash. But also, like uh, when you do snatch, for example, you really need to be your joints need to be flexible and and your muscles totally. need to be un- totally. untightened. So you need a lot of mobility work to do snatch, so yeah. to speak. But also, uh, if you want to do pull-ups, keeping pull-ups, your your lats need to be really, you know. In, in in condition to do that they need mm-hmm. to be released not tight Or yeah the shoulders uh, are also affected there yeah and then if you go to squat your hips uh, i mean hips is a very complicated joint as you know so it's good to do some mobility work for the hips yeah, as well sure so. so now that you are very focused on your uh, let's say fitness life and also your professional life working in engineering do you also uh Are you focused also in nutrition? Have your lifestyle in eating habits have changed or not? Yes, I mean I, I'm quite the, well informed about nutrition, what to eat, what. But not do to you eat do you respect something. that? Do you do? Are you strict to nutrition no, or not. not? And the reason why I'm not, uh, I I don't want to kind of make any justification or anything. But uh, um, the reason why I'm not is because I, I have a full time job in a corporation. Mm-hmm. And uh, I kind of have to eat breakfast and lunch over there, whatever it's served. Also, any snack you need? Uh, snacks, I can, uh, you know, I have control over that. Uh, but it's a bit difficult to strict to a really to have a really strict diet when, once you have all these things that are happening. Mm-hmm. Usually, I wake up at like 5.30. I have my first class at 6.30 in the morning. And then I go straight to work, work, and then come back. I also, when do you go to bed? Uh, I go to bed 10, latest 11 p.m. Wow, good guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I I also I'm doing also some studies on the side, so I have also have to study in the evenings. Uh-huh. 
So, so you're very focused on your professional and your career path, right? Yes, exactly. So do you go with your friends, maybe in nightlife? Do you nightlife is not something I do. You're not a big fan of? No, I, I do go out with friends uh, and, and have a drink. Uh, maybe for lunch or... Then. Uh-huh. Uh, but, but you're not a big fan of going out with your friends and, you know... Having a party, things like that. No, I know. I of course I, I do that, but I, I don't. But like you with not alcohol, your, so it's to speak, not your for example. Style. Uh-huh. People kind of assume that if you go out, you'll like drink a lot and get shit faced and things you'll like that. You spend on alcohol, yeah. I don't do that. You don't do that, and it's not necessarily linked to my fitness uh, culture. It's just that I don't like doing that. It actually originated. You don't enjoy drinking alcohol. No, I don't. Do people in Denmark uh, drink beer? Yes, they drink a lot. They, they drink a lot. Yes. It actually all of this started for me when, uh, when I trained for the marathon because I didn't had a single zip of alcohol for four months straight. Wow, four months since, straight. Since then, I think it started to, you know, I didn't really enjoy alcohol. Anymore. When I was in Vienna, Austria, people used to drink a lot of beers. And in the morning, uh, I remember when I left my, my hostel and I started just walking, I saw that a lot of uh, people were drinking on different bars or drinking beers in the morning. It was 7, 8 a.m. Yeah. And I was like, are these people uh, sober to go and work or are they just uh, sharing their time with uh, their friends? Because it was, you know, yeah. during the week. But uh, it was like a culture. They drink beers in the morning. Yeah, and I'm not uh, sure it's the same in Denmark, but they do drink a lot like during the weekends for sure. Yeah. So. To us, it feels strange, but yeah. uh, to them, it's normal. We have Raki. We drink Raki yeah, in the morning. But, <laughs> but, uh, Do you drink that not? <laughs> like, our generation don't drink don't that. Know. No, we don't. we don't. But if you go to a guest, like, to maybe your uh, relatives, and uh, mm. they would offer you yeah. Raki, but you won't, you won't drink that. But With regards to fitness, I do believe that alcohol is actually a kind of a destructive thing that you can do to yourself. Because I tried that. Uh, with the marathon thing and your performance would just uh, performance you you can feel it you can feel it and you can also feel your muscles are really not getting the because the the thing is if you when you drink alcohol uh, our body is not made to process alcohol Mm -hmm. so uh, our body wants to take alcohol out of our system the moment it gets in So when you drink alcohol, let's say your body system is very busy because it needs to... Exactly. And then the thing is that during that period, your muscles are not getting the right nutrition, Mm -hmm. carbs and fat. Yeah, because alcohol blocks them in a way. Exactly, exactly. And your hormones as well get messy. So so have you heard of this experience that your muscles shrink because of alcohol? That kind of means that it's like, Your muscle is not getting the right nutrition when you drink alcohol, so it could get smaller. Yeah, it shrinks. Uh, and the alcohol, you know, it can get in the system, it can stay in the system for like two days. But there, so. is a, a, there is a lot of big dudes that still drink alcohol and, you know, power lift and still, uh, you know, they look uh, good. But maybe we always talk for the long term, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In the long term, they will feel uh, like shit. I Because when so. you're young, you're... It's not sustainable, so to speak. To yeah. It, so. But also genetics, as we said, plays a big role. It does. If your genetics are really good, you can do whatever you want. You can eat pasta, you can drink beers. That's but you're still true. a strong dude, right? That also true. It depends how your body kind of does these functions. So, yes, yeah, that's right. That's true. So now uh, you're going back in Denmark again. You came to Tirana. Are you teaching any class this, this month? No, I think we're doing a workout tomorrow. Uh-huh. Um, and then What is the the, the 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 hardest, let's say, uh, workout in CrossFit that uh, you have uh, done? I think the hardest is this. Uh, it's called uh, Stairway to Heaven. I think. Uh huh. It's uh, thrusters. How many? Um, it's thrusters and kettlebell swings. Uh, okay. Thrusters is 40 kilos. 40 kilos dumbbells uh, or uh, bar. Okay, bar. You have to do 10 and then 10 kettlebell swings with 32 kilos and then nine nine eight eight seven seven but you have to do it in eight kettlebell minutes kettlebell swings look like they are easy but when you put a lot of weight they get very yeah with 32 kilos there's also a kind of a swing also cardio in the game yes also you need to hold it and after the thrusters 
Yes. Also thrusters, there's kind of a cardio, let's say, cardio and the... Uh, Thruster is one of the hardest exercises yeah, yeah, because yeah. it involves all the muscles. Yeah, that's true. Body, so that's also quite hard. Yeah, so you have done that or you're doing that tomorrow? Uh, I don't think I'll be doing that tomorrow because I've been, you know, on and yeah. off. Uh, but that's one of the hardest I've done. And I haven't managed to finish that uh -huh. in like eight minutes. So yeah. I have some room for improvement there. Yeah. Just one thing I wanted to mention about the US, where you go. Maybe in Denmark, the philosophy of the life you, you like is better. But in US, you, you also know that in US, there is the new exhibition always. I mean, the new, let's say, fitness systems that come into yes. play. You need to go there and see by yourselves. The new, let's say, the new uh, racks that might come into play. You need to go there yeah, to yeah, see them, sure. check them. If you don't go to America, you, you're not like, let's say, uh, fast updated. You get things in Europe, but uh, very slowly. In mm. America, you always, not just the fitness industry, but also the car industry, also the 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 technology. I mean, the thing is that the US is still the... Uh, still well, the I king. Think, I think they're still competing with China about that, but it's the... On what? Uh, with regards to their economy, uh, like probably the biggest economy in China the world. China could overpass yeah. US. So, but I mean, there is a lot of, the market is so much sure, there is so much demand for new stuff and there is a lot of money on the market. So people are constantly, as you say, doing new things, improving new things. And CrossFit itself is, is American. Uh, it started in the US. Yeah. I've actually been at the CrossFit that uh, where CrossFit first The originated. origin of... In, in Santa Cruz in California. Santa Cruz, California. Uh -huh. And the funny thing is that it didn't work out. The first CrossFit gym that they did there, it didn't really work out. Why? Because it, took, it was a new thing and maybe exactly, what, it's exactly what you like said about people when they see a new Alpine, thing, yeah, they don't have exactly. information so they don't come in. But then uh, somehow it, uh, you know, people understood it. And the thing is in the fitness business is like the excellence will win at the end of the day. So in CrossFit is like if you do CrossFit right, you will really get results and you'll get results that you don't really see with doing other stuff. So uh -huh. that's, that's, you know, what works at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, but, but yes, I mean, in, in, in the U S really, you can see the latest fitness trends and yeah, that's true. Uh, that's with, why I love U S before I opened the first gym, I went to California because that's like really where the things happen. Uh, -huh. uh and visited quite a lot of gyms with different concepts. Um, that I kind of cherry picked some of their elements uh -huh. uh, that we implemented also in Elizabeth yeah. Club. Uh, but but yes, you you do see quite a lot of stuff and a lot of good like CrossFit competitors are from the US. Even though now it's I mean in the do globalization, a lot of Europeans, Australians, I mean, a lot of people are coming in with a lot of uh, good uh, competition. Uh -huh, to uh, CrossFit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of people from Scandinavia as well. Apparently, they have some wow. genetics uh, that <laughs> makes them good. Don't tell me. <laughs> uh, but here in Europe, do we have many CrossFit boxes? Here in Europe, like yeah, yeah, of course, we have a lot. Also in Italy, in uh, like affiliated. Yeah, if, so if you go to, we have uh, a big number here in Europe. Like, I, I, I ask so. you this because I want to know: Does work uh, CrossFit work in Europe? Yeah, it does, it does. I mean, if you go because to crossfit.com, the website, and okay. if you go to affiliates, okay. there you have a map, uh, and then you can go to a country, you yeah. can search the country and then see how many CrossFit affiliates there are in that country. Do we have here in the Balkan region, maybe in Serbia, in Croatia, in uh, Romania, in uh, Kosovo, do we have any we, CrossFit? We ha in the Balkans, we have CrossFit affiliates everywhere besides Albania. We no have, way. We have, we have one in Kosovo? in Kosovo, one in Macedonia. Come on. Quite a lot in Greece. Uh, so it's very popular. So actually, Albania is still lagging a bit behind on this. So what I don't I'm not get sure it how it works because again, CrossFit is an expensive thing. Yeah. So and and people in this region are a bit poor. So to yeah, speak, but that's another question. If you think you can bring the CrossFit box here, do you think you can? Uh, you know, can you get back the money from the people? We'll have to just, find out. Or you need to stay just equal and just uh, keep the brand hard, here. But we'll have to find out. It will be hard, of course. Uh, so you you want to try it, no matter what. Of course. You need to give time. Of course. Maybe just like you gave time to to your. Uh, the thing is that people like CrossFit, right? Yeah. 
And uh, if we open but the first affiliate, yeah, those people that like CrossFit, they should come to CrossFit. Yeah, sure. So, for example, when you have a CrossFit box le- legally opened in your country, uh, do you have guests from uh, CrossFit members that are official? Yes, yeah, that so can come and visit your CrossFit box. Because yes. if I know that in your CrossFit box, let's say uh, some athlete from CrossFit zone would come and show up there and maybe have uh, maybe yes. do training or maybe kind of a seminar and have some fun and maybe you know a cocktail party i'm sure that yes. many people will just would like to come there but yes and this is exactly what's the the point of crossfit also oh, okay is that it's international and it's a club as well so yes exactly you can do that and you can also maybe host like seminars and do the like certificate like level one training you can do it in albania oh, perfect so crossfit provides that yeah, provides course. that to you so it's possible yeah. to do those type of things as well yes after you get the certificate level two you hope that uh, maybe next year you hopefully. want to hopefully <laughs> i wish you luck on that man thank you yeah, i had a great time thank you <laughs> okay thank you. shall we go okay yes. bye everybody <laughs>